Well, hey guys, it's Viejo here, and we are in the first week of October in 2024. Fall is upon us. Another nice day here on the central coast of California. It's still been foggy in the mornings, but it uh, actually got pretty warm here this afternoon, uh, up into the high 70s, low 80s um, around the area. Hey, this is uh, part one of episode two of Wad Cutter Wednesday, and uh, what we're going to look at today is the MP. HG50 hollow base wad cutter. All right, that's their designation. And um, we have several hollow base uh, bullets to show you in this series. Uh, most of them actually are going to come from MP, although we've got some others around, at least one other one from Lyman that you'll get to see uh, later on in the series. But there's quite a bit of history behind the uh, hollow base wad cutter. The original concept was that you shot a relatively soft alloy bullet and that hollow base has a, what's usually referred to as a skirt around that hollow core. Let's take a look first at the bullet and compare it to the Hensley and Gibbs number 50 of which the MP version is something of a clone. Let's take a look at those. That's the Hensley and Gibbs version on the right in the green color and the MP version on the left and you can see that nice deep hollow base there but other than the hollow base they are essentially the same design so again the idea with those hollow base uh, 38 special wad cutters was that with a relatively uh, low charge of bullseye that skirt would expand enough without you know blowing itself apart in your barrel uh, to completely obdurate that barrel and fully engage the rifling and uh, and therefore, you know, have some increased accuracy as a result of that. And that uh, actually works pretty well. Um, you can't overdo the charge with those skirts. They're a little flimsy and um, they will come apart on you if you have too much pressure behind them. So hence the 2.8-ish grains of bullseye low, uh, low charge. You know, not to mention the fact that we get, you know, very little recoil, not much muzzle jump and yet pretty good accuracy out of them. So um, what we're going to do is take a look at the mold uh, and the casting process. Uh, unfortunately, for those of you on YouTube, you know you can't see that um, part of it here on this platform. Uh, you're going to have to go to the Rumble channel, and if you're watching on Rumble, we're going to go right into taking a look at the mold itself and uh, then jump into the casting. And today I'm going to use these kind of deep... Um, pins on here and um, I coated these little graphite just took my pencil and kind of rubbed it up and down all the way around there got a little graphite on there to help them release a little better all right let's get this guy put together and heat it up and ready to go okay so these are not too bad so there's that deep let's see if we can get in there and show you that big old hole down in there so we got pretty deep hollow base Okay, skirt it all the way up. This guy, same way. Not bad, the bullets actually look pretty good. Okay, let's keep going. All right, here we come out of the oven with the Hensley and Gibbs number 50 hollow base wad cutter. And these are done up in a blend 50-50 of Eastwood Vermilion and Signal Red, uh, just a color mix that I call Screaming Eagle because it's kind of reminiscent of the Harley-Davidson color after they uh, <laughs> went some dry, so into the quench they go. Here's our spec sheet with that bullet. Okay, the H&G uh, 50 hollow base wad cutter. You can see with that hollow base there we are at uh, less than 148 grains, which is about the weight of the Hensley and Gibbs version. So we're down at 126. Both uh, uh, cavities on that mold are right at 0.358, which is good. Okay, our overall length of the bullet, 0.580, is the same as my Hensley and Gibbs bullets. And the base up to the top of the crimp, about uh, 0.475 inches. So there's our, our dope there. 
All right, there you go. The casting went fairly well. It wasn't the best performance that I've gotten out of an MP mold, but it uh, delivered us a bunch of bullets that we got to go um, get ready to go shoot, get them loaded up. And um, what we'll do uh, next time in part two of this is we'll uh, get them loaded and take them to the range and you know, get a few shot for you. Um, but that's... Um, I think going to do it for this one. So uh, if you haven't uh, already gone over and checked out the Rumble channel before, you go to rumble.com and you type in in their search field my channel name, which is right here. Okay, just Walter Bunning all, all run together like that. Um, and you can find the video over there uh, and see how the casting went. Take a look at that mold, all that kind of stuff. I'd like to just be able to show you the mold, but I got a strike for that one time too. So just for showing a cold mold, you know. Who knows? Anyway, is what it is. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Got something out of it. Check in with us next Wednesday for part two. But from the Viejo bench for now, that's all she wrote.